Hey, hey, my friends. Hello, hello. Here we are. It is. Let's chat with Nat. Oh, somehow I got the framing all wrong. Um, have I done that? Why am I sitting so low in the frame? There we go, that's a bit better. It's chat with Matt. It's the 9th of September here in New Zealand, 9 9 2020. Um, over here anyway, and it's 9 a.m. So here we go, we've got three nights, that's always good. Um, bit of completion. So chat with Matt, 30 minutes to talk to me about whatever's going on for you. I think there was some stuff written in. I've just got off a call and I got to get back to Facebook. So close that, close that. Facebook on my laptop. Oh my goodness. Bear with me. Hey, Sister Ashti, how are you? Um, there's a message from my mum saying that I managed to use the wrong sort of plane in the message I put out about cuddles passing. Um, <laughs> it's always good to have proofreading in reverse. I'll get there. I'm going to get there at some stage with... Um, I'm in the wrong group. Okay. I'm getting there, my friends. Hang in there. Hang in there. I'm open for questions, by the way. Hey, Sister Stacy, how are you? Hey, Brother Jason. I did get your email this morning. Thank you, mate. That was very uh, informative. Hey, Sister Jane. Hey, Mary. Right. Here we go. There's me. I just want to get to where I... No, that's still not there. Bright light beings group. I just want to get to the where I put the notification out for this call if someone wrote in anything that i need to not that i need to that i have opportunity to talk to there's me live there's the post about cuddles passing yes yeah, so cuddles has passed for those of you who haven't heard yet oh my god here we go here we go i found it i found it i found it stop worrying um Okay, so there's nothing actually. There's nothing that needs being addressed. Okay, so I'm free. Hey, Sister Vesna, how are you? Um, right. Mary has a question. Go on, give it to me, Mary. What's going on? I haven't had my drink yet this morning, which I do need. Um, yeah, so what a time to be alive, right? Um, lots and lots of stuff uh, is changing and, you know, people are, are transitioning. We've got you know, good friends who are very ill and all sorts of stuff happening. And I've, you know, got clients who have got big things happening. It's a very, very unstable time. And unstable's not wrong, but it is quite hard for us as little egoic beings to cope with these things changing and the loss that, that goes with it. Um, whether it's a real loss, like losing someone or something that's really valuable to you, or a perceived loss, um, doesn't really matter, right? If our ego perceives that we're losing something like a, a, a way of being or a relationship or whatever, it's it's hard. It's hard, but not necessarily bad which I know is, is difficult for the ego to get its head around. This may take some time to type, says Mary. Okay. Um, hey, Sister Anne, how are you? So, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting time on the planet. I'm not really liking that lighting very much. Let's see if I can do something better about that. There we go. Um, it's an interesting time. It's a really powerful time. It's a really beneficial time, but it's not necessarily a comfortable time. So the more... <clears throat> Those are just bits of dust that's come off the curtain, obviously. A very clean, hygienic room. <laughs> My little den out here. Um, can you speak to synchronicity and what it means? <sighs> yeah, I can. Well, I can give you my take on it because it means whatever it means. <laughs> so, synchronicity is really just the experience of having things mean more to you than it would normally mean the average person from the average perception. Synchronicity is really the experience where we look into a deeper, um, a, 
a deeper meaning behind why things. Yeah, thanks, Anne. <laughs> we were supposed to be just coming home from Bali about now, weren't we? Um, no, we're supposed to still be in Bali, I think, for another three or four days. When are we going back to Bali? That's a very good question. Um, okay, <clears throat> so synchronicity is when we have an awareness or at least a perception that something means more to us than just the surface level. <clears throat> Quite often comes with a, a deeper knowing or an energetic connection or a sensation or a... It's hard to describe, right? That, that, that knowing sensation that we have inside of us that, oh, this is coming to suggest something to me. Um, it, it's always hard for us as a, as a human with an intellect to wonder whether I'm making that up, or whether I'm reading into it, or whether I'm conjuring it, right? Some people look for synchronicity. Some people will take any sign as a synchronicity. Some people really, quote unquote, want synchronicity. They want confirmation. They want reinforcement that what they're doing is right. So they will look for signs very actively and thus they can get a little bit deluded in it because what you look for, you find, right? This is a very, very real thing um, that quantum physics is now proving the way that you observe anything happening has an influence over it. When you go looking for something, more than likely you find it, right? This is very interesting because look what they're doing now in New Zealand anyway with COVID. For many months, we had virtually no COVID testing happening in the country unless someone was sick and presenting with with symptomology that looked like COVID, then they would test them and decide whether it was or wasn't. And in most of the cases, they were having negative results. So we were COVID free for 100 days. All of a sudden, they decided to start mass testing the society again, even though we didn't have any COVID cases. And what happens? Oh, we find COVID. <laughs> what you look for, you will find. It happens all of the time. Um, you know, there's a saying, the pessimist is rarely disappointed, right? A pessimist is rarely disappointed because they're looking for bad things in the world and they quite often keep seeing them. The flavor of our perception always influences what happens. So getting back to synchronicities, there is always this danger that people want synchronicities and therefore are flavoring everything they see as a synchronicity. Now, is it a bad thing? Not necessarily, because if it's, if it's, if it's helping them take action in a positive direction, then it's a great thing. It doesn't really matter. But I think, Ashki, the, the synchronicity you're talking for is much, you have, with your sensitivity, have a much more empowered relationship with recognizing that stuff is happening for a reason to lead you in a direction. Stuff is happening to help you, to help formulate the, the, the choices that you are making. And so it's just a matter of being willing to recognize that stuff. It's a matter of maintaining an empowered relationship with it. Um, so I'd say, I'm going to read that, Mary. Don't panic. I'll just keep finishing talking about synchronicity. Um, so it's a subtle relationship that might not always feel subtle for people who are very sensitive. It might hit them in the face. But for the, the subtlety comes in, in in using it in an empowered way and not allowing it to become too important. Because when we normalize synchronicity, then we can just use it in a very matter of fact and empowered, mature way, right? Where it's just like, oh, well, yeah, I just, you know, that synchronicity just helps take me in this way. When we blow ourselves out of the water and get all excited, wow, I've just had a synchronicity, then that level of excitement and the importance that we put on it tends to manipulate the choices that we make in a not so beneficial way, right? We can hold a higher expectation that, oh, I had a synchronicity leading me into this experience. Therefore, it should be a magnificent outcome. And quite often what we find is when we go into where the synchronicity is leading us, it's not a magnificent outcome. Sometimes it's an uncomfortable outcome. And we think, well, what the f went wrong? I was I, I got all the signs to, to do this, right? This was supposed to work because I got synchronicity. We don't understand what supposed to work is, right? <laughs> 
because quite often we have to go through a process of having uncomfortable or disappointing mistakes or or things right at this place at, i am at this place that of i can't make this shit up exactly exactly so you're recognizing that you are being led in a direction now the point is is to be willing to go in the direction without an overinflated expectation that it's supposed to be a good outcome right a happy outcome of uh, uh, the outcome that you want and allow yourself to really trust that you're being led in a direction that is beneficial it's going to be beneficial it's going to help you get to the ultimate outcome you are looking for even if the stuff that you step into is not as comfortable as you might like the point is is not to go back in hindsight and judge the synchronicities as a mistake or you didn't read it right because that's what i see a lot of people do they recognize the synchronicities then they go into the actions that they think they're being led and then they wonder why it didn't work and then they start thinking that there's something wrong that they got it wrong or god's source their guides are not reliable because they don't understand that they're being led forward on a procession to get to the outcome they want to think that they're just going to go from a to z they're just going to get the good outcome straight away because they're now following their guidance they think if you follow your guidance you're just going to have good outcomes pleasant outcomes the outcome that their ego wants and it's just not the case in my experience i've been led very strongly into situations that felt like a complete failure <laughs> <laughs> and were very disappointing, even though I had very strong guidance to do it. Right. And so over time, I've come to realize that just because I've got strong guidance to do it doesn't mean it's going to be a comfortable outcome, but it's always going to be a beneficial outcome. When we look, when we look back in hindsight from further out, we can see that that was uncomfortable, but look what it led to. Maybe there isn't a particular action with the sinks. Yeah, kind of. I'm just trying to think where I'm going from there with that. Um, yeah, so the there's always an action. There's always an action because life is an action. So even if the sinks are just telling you to 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 just keep following your intuition in the moment that's that that's an action right and that's a reinforcement i get what you mean when you say there isn't a particular action there isn't a particular big choice that you need to make it's not not something monumental that you need to change that um it's just flowing and i think synchronicities and and these alignments are happening more and more frequently and it is happening for more and more of us to normalize i think we're all going through a pro or many of us are going through a process of of expecting in a positive way not a not an overinflated expectation but uh just a normalization that shit falls into place when we're just when we when we are following our heart and and these synchronicities are just reminding us that when we're on path when we're when we're flowing with it then it will happen right we and and the synchronicity it's interesting because synchronicities aren't always a good thing it's, as you say well i can't make this shit up it's like whoa that's a bit full-on it's not necessarily a happy thing or a good thing it's quite often a weird thing um but it's it i think we're being trained or opened to to working more and more in this way so we're seeing it more and more more and more effectively and as we become more and more sensitive to it it's becoming more and more obvious to us hopefully i got there let me know if i didn't and anyone else is very welcome to jump into that conversation about that i'm got to go find i've got to click on here to go and find mary's question that's disappeared up the speed Anyone else is very put that on silent uh it was an innocent misunderstanding. Okay. Okay. Mary wrote, what to do when a friend did not understand a question that was asked about a product that was being addressed and then gets upset when it's purchased from someone else and not them because they did not understand the question that was intended for them. They said no to the question in the first place and now they have nothing to do with you. 
Um, you just give them space, Mary. <laughs> I get it. So misunderstandings, misunderstandings happen um, for various reasons. And it's never a mistake, right? Th that outcome is working for both of you now. That's So when you trust that nothing's a mistake and it's working for both of you, even though this has caused a, a rift in the, in the current engagement in the relationship, um, there's opportunity for both of you to further progress from here. So... The you know the obvious thing to do if if it's important to you to re if the if the friendship is important for you to save if you think that there is definitely value in saving the relationship because you really feel there's value in the relationship, um, because you feel there's value in the relationship, not because you know. So what I encourage you to do is not to rescue it because you're worried that they've misunderstood you and therefore they're upset with you and you don't want them to be upset with you just for the fact that it feels uncomfortable for them to be upset with you. If that's the case, then just let them be upset. Um, but if you really feel in your heart that that relationship was important to you, then you open the lines of communication and address the misunderstanding in plain, simple language, right? I asked you whether you had this product for me to buy. You obviously misunderstood and said, no, I went and bought it from someone else and now you're upset. How can we fix this, right? Simple as that. That's, that's, the, that's the thing, right? Now, if they get on their high horse and, and make a huge thing about it, then it's very clear that that relationship is not one worth having. Um, if they then understand from there and uh, look to, you know, reconcile what went down and, and, and grieve the errance of it, air the grievance and, and move back together, then, you know, potentially there's a relationship you can have. Um, it's up to you. So honest communication is always valid, but you don't need to. I think I put this out before, you know, a few months ago, I put a, a Facebook meme sort of thing out there saying, you know, don't apologize for people misunderstanding you. Right. Yeah. So this is exactly it. I tried, but felt like I was getting put on a guilt trip. So this person is, you don't need a relationship with this person. So it's not your place to try and appease their pain from their misunderstanding. Um, if they want to punish you for their misunderstanding, then that's not someone you need to be, um, you need to be in relationship with unless there is serious reasons for you to want to be in relationship with this person. Otherwise, it's a pretty big sign that um, you, you'd be better off spending your energy in different relationships and attracting other people into your life that uh, understood you in a, in, a, in a more beneficial way. And it's true that this person might just be going through their shit and you just, so from here, you just give them space. Um, and then when they want when they feel that they're missing out on the relationship with you, then they can come back. Um, it's it's never beneficial to operate from a space of need that you need to fix the relationship because the relationship is, you're missing something without it, right? Um, because the truth is there's always other people to have relationships with. Um, as I said, unless this person has a particular place that's important in the bigger scheme of your life, um, if they're just a friend who's fallen out because they're going through their shit, then sometimes um, if you've made the effort to rectify the situation and to clarify, then there's no need to keep trying to appease them because, you know, if they want to put you on a guilt trip, then that's just that's just their own stuff. That's just their own stuff coming up and they need to go through their healing journey with that. And it's no good you trying to make it better um, because it's not going to help them heal. Does that help? Oh. In the Montara Transformation Empowerment Support Community this month, we're talking about community. <clears throat> it's a rather interesting um, topic, conversation, allowing ourselves to really move into a deeper relationship with 
with how community can really serve us. And a lot of it's around letting go of this old sacrificial way of maintaining relationships, of trying to own a persona or fit into a persona or, or a role um, to, to, to gain appreciation from our particular community. Um, awesome. I'm glad that speaks to your synchronicities as well, Ashki. Um, so, so what I'm really feeling into is this, we've got this great opportunity for new forms of community to arise where it's much more natural understanding that every member of the community is valuable based on the being that they be rather than on the contribution that they do, right? Get out of the doing this. And we're no longer looking for, you know, we're no longer looking for sacrificial relationships in any form of community that we have because we understand that if someone's sacrificing themselves in order to do something, then what they do doesn't carry the highest vibration. It comes tainted with their resentment in their sacrifice. So <clears throat> allowing this more empowered space of community to arise where we're where we are taking the emphasis off people following their word and doing what they promised to do because we just want everyone in our community to follow their heart in the moment with joy, right? And so it's hard for us to get our head around when we've been doing community from this sort of rule-based structure of hierarchy where everyone's expected to play their role, um, to let go of that so that people can innately, and we can all innately find a trust that if everyone's following their heart, then the highest and best outcomes will arise. And we don't need to micromanage and control how society runs, how our communities run. Of course, there's various levels and layers of community. A community can be, you know, your household is a community. We call it a family, but it's a community, right? Um, oh my goodness, I've got stuff going on. Um, hey, Debbie Love that the being that you be rather than the contribution. Yeah, well, yeah, so the contribution is the being, um, but the contribution is the being rather than the doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so this, this, this opportunity as we enter this more collaborative divine feminine vibration now, this, this foundation of love to operate from as opposed to a foundation of fear and maintaining rules and, and structures, to redefine our communities or to loosen our communities where we have much more trust that in people following their heart is going to yield the best outcome for all of us, even if we can't intellectually see how it's going to work. So it's interesting times. It's interesting times. And, and I'm, I am very excited and curious as to how these relationships are just going to unravel. And of course, when we, you know, communities in general, it's hard enough, we have a hard enough time understanding the relationship we have with ourself, let alone the relationship we have with one other person. But when we get into community and there's relationships going on with multiple people and the intertwining of energies that happens, the entanglement of influence that occurs in community, it's impossible for our little mind to freaking understand it. So the more that we can let go of trying to dumb it down and simplify it the way that we've done in the past, you know, hey, Brother Rich, in the way we've done in the past, we want to understand things. So the way we understand things is we overly simplify them. And then to maintain them in overly simplified categories, we create these fucking rules, right, that keep people operating in very simple quantum steps. And we kind of delude ourselves of the of the intricacies and the intertwinements that are going on right in the past we didn't care that someone else was sacrificing themselves to do something we just wanted them to do it because we thought the value was in the doing but now we're understanding that if someone's doing something with a vibration of sacrifice then that what they do doesn't really carry a very high vibration and therefore it's not nearly as valuable or valued as if they were to do it from a space of love. So therefore, do we want them to actually do it from a place of sacrifice or would we rather them not do it at all and do something else that was from a place of love, right? So 
we're, we're starting to recognize how the energy plays through everything that happens and redefine how we orchestrate our communities and holding someone in a contractual agreement or a promise that they're going to do it isn't important to us anymore because if they're not doing it from a space of love, then we don't want them to do it. This enlightenment that's occurring is very exciting, but also a little bit scary because how do we make sure everything gets done if we're not contracting people, not holding people to promises that the actual doing gets done? How can we trust that people will step in and do the do that needs to be done in the moment from a space of love, even if they haven't promised, even if they're not scheduled, rostered to do that doing, right? It's going to take a lot of trust and it's going to take a lot of intention. As we all, all members of the community hold the intention that we are going to achieve whatever needs to be achieved through a co-collaborative, a co-collaborative, just a collaborative will do, a collaborative co-creation, then um, we will get there, right? Because intention is everything. Intention is everything. And as we um, as we expect it to be that way, then it will. Like as I started at the start of this conversation, whatever you go looking for, you find, right? And I gave the example of now that they're looking very intently to find COVID, of course they find it because the test is fucked anyway, but that doesn't really matter. Um, being not doing, just couldn't type all that you said and listened at the same time. I know, I know, it's a, it's a rather uh, interesting way of, trying to main, uh, have conversations with people while I'm ranting and there multiple people are typing it's it's quite fun <laughs> not always a, not always effective especially in the old ways of doing things right but we trust um, and you know and that's it Deb because the, the thing to trust is that me clarifying wasn't a, a slight on that you didn't give me all the information it was the fact there's probably someone else listening or possibly listening in the future that needed the clarification right there are no mistakes there are no mistakes and um, when working in a group it's always interesting especially when I do Q&A calls but quite often someone asks a question and I give an answer which answers their question and then goes further beyond what they asked or, or beside what they asked to answer other people's questions who didn't even speak it, right? Um, so, and but it's, it's kind of hard for the person who asked the question to think, oh, Matt's gone off on a tangent talking to something that they didn't ask or something that they don't need, they don't think they need to hear it, um, but it's for someone else because there's multiple people listening. Um, great to hear your words on heart-centered community planning a ceremony this month on this very topic. Awesome, Brother Rich. It's very exciting and scary, as you said. Intention is everything. Exactly, Rich. Your uh, ceremony will be um, perfect. Your job is to just relax into it. Just to relax into it. And you, you can't get it wrong. You can't get it wrong because your intention is all that matters. The words and the actions that go in the ceremony are secondary to the intention. And at the end of the day, you'll end up changing it anyway, right? You all, all best laid plans, right? <laughs> I do the same, right? Do some planning before I deliver a, a, a talk, right? But then just allow myself to go in the moment, knowing that the plans are always there that you can come back to. It's it's not inappropriate um it's not inappropriate sorry i'm trying to oh, i'm using my finger on the screen no wonder it's not working uh, <laughs> it's not inappropriate to plan things because it gives our mind a sense of foundation that helps it to relax but then what's important is that we don't restrict ourselves, limit ourselves based on the plans that we've made. So plan things by all means to give you a foundation, but then be willing to go above and beyond the plans that you've laid. Allow yourself to, to go in the moment, right? Um, but making the plans to start with is, is a good start. I always find, you know, the five Ps, prior, prior planning, no, prior preparation prevents poor performance or prior planning prevents poor performance. Um, but we don't need to get limited to the fact that, oh, I've made all these plans, now I have to go through with them. Otherwise, that was a waste of time making the plans. It wasn't a waste of time making the plans. Making the plans actually cements your intention to have a good outcome. The fact that you invested time in making the plans 
it reinforces your intention to have a good outcome. And then when you get to it in the moment, you don't need to get so contracted around, I have to follow the plan. You can allow yourself to flow in the energy because your intention is so strong now because you've already invested time in it that you can bring the best to the fore depending on what's in front of you and in the moment what the energy is speaking through you. It's more about allowing the collective voice to speak than running a ceremony. Exactly, exactly. But running a ceremony is the allowing the collective to speak through you and through your facilitation, not necessarily always through your mouth, but but as the convener of the ceremony, your intention and your facilitation is creating the space where the collective will speak. So um, it's about getting out of the idea that you need to micromanage it That's and control it. You don't need to control anything, but you do need to take command of it. You do need to own it and take responsibility that you are responsible for, bring, for bringing the intention to life. That's it, right? You're responsible for bringing the intention to life. And we do that by relaxing in the moment. And to relax in the moment, we do the preparation to give us the confidence that we can relax in the moment. It's a convoluted path, but do the preparation, then relax in the moment to allow the collective to speak through you, which might allow, which might be letting the other members of the community speak in the moment, right? Because you all of a sudden get the uh, guidance that that would be appropriate. Or not. Sometimes you have to have, follow the guidance that it's not appropriate that certain people speak, and therefore you, quote unquote, shut that down a bit, and you don't allow other people to railroad it with less than pure intention um, around it. Sometimes people have the intention to grandstand or make themselves important and you don't need that railroading a ceremony that carries a strong intention and a strong um, opportunity. So it's not about being a jellyfish and it's not about being a control freak. It's about allowing yourself to take command and then allow the energy to speak in the moment with what you know, trust that you know what's most appropriate for that ceremony because you're organizing it, it's yours. It's a delicate balance and not something you need to get perfect, right? We all we all can go back in hindsight and judge how well we did. But again, it comes down to your intention, trusting your intention and trusting your guidance in the moment and be willing to act as best you can from, and then maintaining compassion that none of us act perfectly. We've all got our own stuff. We get triggered. We da 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 da. We have to dance our dance. Is that really chat with Matt finished? <clears throat> I just felt that I was getting warmed up. Um, half an hour has flown by, my friends. Uh, so hopefully that has served you. Hopefully, I don't like that term. Um, I trust that that has served you. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, I'll be back again next week at the same time, same place. Um, but in the meantime, you can always post into this group and we can talk on that. Or you can reach out to me personally, and I am um, very, very happy to work with any of you to achieve whatever is going to benefit the all. So much, much love. Um, I feel like I've got an announcement to make, but I can't think what it is, so I'll just have to suck that up and <laughs> let it go. Um, no, I don't think there's anything important, important coming up for the rest of this week. It is uh, strong energies, uh, very, very beneficial energies. It's a great time. Structures are really loosening up. It's a great time for you to step out into your own brilliance, my friends. Uh, I know you're unsure. We're all unsure right now. There's a lot of unsureness around, but allow that to give you the permission to step forward despite being sure, because the truth is none of us are ever sure before we speak. step forward. But be willing to step forward right now into being a greater expression of yourself. Offer your services out there. Work in different ways with people. Clarify things. Be more present as yourself. That is a huge opportunity for that right now. Um, it's time to be the change you want to see in, in our society. So uh, step up right, and be a, a voice of reason in these um, chaotic times. Be a, uh, and not just a voice, but just an example of someone who's keeping their shit together, someone who's maintaining their confidence in themselves, not from controlling the external around them, we, we've got to let go of that right now. The external is out of control, which is perfect. It needs to run its course. Our job is to maintain confidence as 
us as the being despite the fact that the external is out of control. The more people that see us being confident despite the externals out of control, the more that they can relax into being confident as well. And when that happens, that out of controlness will just fade away because society will have shifted into a new vibration that is much more internally confident in themselves and much, much less um, able to be led by fear-based um, propaganda and whatever that other word that starts with I is, influence. Um, okay, much, much love. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now. Namaste. Oh, it's up here.